What's up everybody? Thanks for watching today, baby. All right guys, today's video is going to be a short one and I'm going to talk about two things that I changed to help me stop drinking alcohol on a normal frequent basis and to also stop taking painkillers on a normal frequent basis. So before I begin the video guys, you need to see the disclaimer which states that I am not a doctor. Nothing on this channel is medical advice. So if you're struggling with addiction, please seek out your own medical professional. This channel is for entertainment purposes only, guys. Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. Also, I'm going to leave the sponsors of the week scrolling for the entirety of the stream. They are who supports this channel financially. So shout out to you guys. I appreciate y'all. All right, let's get on with the video, guys. So two things that really kept my addiction going for many years. Now, many of you guys know that I struggle with opiate addiction for 15, 20 years, something like that. It was a long time, right? Um, of course, that was started by a motorcycle accident, which gave me access to a bunch of lower tabs for a shattered collarbone. And that kind of sent me off to the races with my addiction, right? Couple that with being in my early 20s and at a time in my life where I was surrounded by people who like to party and have fun and drink alcohol, right? So Naturally, that's what I did as well. I drank alcohol. I was in my early 20s. We partied often and had quote unquote fun often, right? And um, it's just kind of how a lot of people run their lives in their 20s. They, they get instant access to alcohol and trust me, they take full advantage of that. <laughs> so it's important to take stock of who you surround yourself with, right? If, if you surround yourself with five people who drink alcohol every night, you're going to be the sixth person who drinks alcohol every night, more than likely, right? Chances are. But these two main things, guys, are really what kind of kept my addiction going for many years. Um, I was at, at a few different points in my life, kind of low-key addicted to alcohol, right? It wasn't like I was drinking alcohol every night most of the time. But it was to where if, if I was hanging out with somebody that I was dating or... If it was the weekend, for sure, I would be drinking alcohol, right? And taking painkillers at the same time, which is not wise. Do not do that. Um, so let's get to it. <laughs> All right. So the main first big, huge thing that I had to change in my life to get rid of both of those addictions was I had to remove drama people from my life, toxic people from my life. You know, for most of my life, up until about 35 years old, I thought that your childhood friends were just who you're always going to be friends with, and your family is who you're always going to be in touch with on a frequent basis. Uh, I didn't really realize that you could kind of push relationships to the side and love people from afar, right? And so I just always thought that these certain people that I was hanging around with were always going to be a part of my life on a frequent, normal basis. Um so I, I was like, let's see what happens when I start to remove uh, dramatic people from my life. And I started doing that kind of one at a time, right? And it was kind of, I felt guilty kind of doing that, even, even if it was like my family member. It is somebody that I had to push aside for a while. Um, but just experiencing so much drama from certain people in your life or um, certain people I was dating, right, would be consistently stressing me out with fighting or making making up and breaking up or throwing low low blows at each other right um, I was in a lot of toxic relationships why because I was toxic myself um, I see a lot of people that love to point the blame at their spouse or their or their girlfriend or their boyfriend while taking no accountability for their own um, for their own actions right uh, if you are somebody who struggles with an addiction, especially on a daily basis, then you have some work to do, my friend. And that's okay, right? A lot of people have a lot of work. Uh, almost everybody has a lot of work they need to get done on their on themselves, right? So it's, I think, important to take some self-accountability and to realize, like I just did, I was toxic myself. I was struggling with my opiate addiction, and I was also including alcohol. Uh, on a frequent basis. So, of course, if you drugs and alcohol equal drama, um, and I would say that for 
anybody who surrounds themselves with people who drink alcohol often or who use or take or abuse drugs, you are going to be dealing with some sort of drama in one way or another. Just remember that guys, drugs and alcohol, drugs or alcohol equal drama. Okay. So if you are taking drugs on a, on a basis <laughs> and uh, you're going to tolerate low quality behavior, why? Because you are doing low quality behavior yourself. You attract what you are in one way or another guys. Um, if you struggle with opiate addiction, it's likely that your partner is going to start struggling with opiate addiction if they don't already, right? Because you kind of vibrate to the people that you hang around with. So I started cutting people, toxic people out of my life. I started having a, um, a policy, something to the along the lines of my life is a drama free zone. Um, and I started kind of living by that mentality and letting people know that I did take into my small circle. Hey, I don't do drama. You know, I don't like the gossipy drama crap. So if that's what you're going to do, I'm just going to kind of have to push you aside. Um, and that's exactly what I did guys. Um, I, I, I did what I'm talking about, right? Um, there was a point where I was just fed up with drama, uh, dramatic relationship after dramatic relationship. And it's because I needed to take time off of dating and stop dragging my opiate addiction into new relationships. And it was just nothing but drama every single time, different women, same dramas, right guys, because I was accepting crappy behavior because I was doing crappy behavior. So it's as simple as that guys remove dramatic people from your life, work on yourself, work on your addictions. Don't just point the finger at other people around you, take some accountability and uh, start working on your addictions if you have them. Okay. Because if you are, like I said, just a moment ago, I'm going to stop repeating myself now. If you are struggling with a certain type of addiction, you're going to allow dramatic people into your life. All right, second major thing, guys, that I did to, to get out of the addiction mindset was to stop staying at crappy jobs that I hated. There was at least three jobs I can think of, long-term jobs that I had that I hated. And how I bypassed that was I would take painkillers before I went to work, right? And that started out as a Monday or wait, a Friday thing was my reward for the end of the work week. I was like, oh, I deserve this because this job is really stressful. And boom, take my lower tab 10 at work every day. And I enjoyed the job then. That's weird, right? Can you see the problem there? If you're turning a job that you hate into a job that you love based off of a pill that you take before work, that is going to create some bad behaviors and addictions. And that's exactly what that did, right? So I had a really high stressful um, job that it was like a cutthroat sales type job, right? And you had to be forceful basically with customers who are trying to cancel and you pretty much couldn't let them cancel or else you weren't going to make money. <laughs> so it was kind of shady tactics um, from the get go with that company. And they did go under obviously. And the next job I had after that, um, one that I could think of was a, a long-term government job. I had no interest in the job. It was literally just good benefits and steady pay. And so that's why I stayed for so many years. And not only I disliked my job, but I was still going with my um, addiction, right? And so, and I kept attracting the same dramatic people into my life. And you can see how it's just a a spiraling effect. <laughs> so st if you're in a job that you hate and it's a dead end job and you feel like you, you don't want to be there every day and your body is telling you your brain, your soul, whatever is telling you every single day that you go to work that you don't want to be there, then you need to make the change, get out of there and find something that you can be happy with. Right? Maybe it's to start that business that you've been scared to start for whatever reasons you're afraid of failure or whatever it is. Right? Start that business, take a chance because life is cruising by guys. Look how old we're all getting. Look how fast life is going by, right? Look how many people are just dying left and right. Life goes fast. And if you sit there and you numb yourself out with drugs or alcohol, life's just going to pass you by. And before you know it, you're going to be old and 
no energy and you're going to wonder where the hell did life go you didn't do the things you want to do because you were afraid to take a chance you were afraid to go through withdrawal you were afraid to remove those people from your life and so you tolerated crappy behavior so guys i just wanted to say if you're struggling with addiction and you have you're surrounded by dramatic people in your life i encourage you to spend some time alone don't be afraid of your own shadow because you're if you're afraid of your own shadow then you are going to create you're going to tolerate shitty behavior from people because they know that they can do or say whatever they want to you and you're so afraid of your own shadow that they can just do whatever they want and you'll take them back every time right so hopefully you guys can take some information from this video um, those two things that i changed really 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 made huge huge changes in my life as far as my addiction goes let me know what you guys noticed in your life things that helped you get out of your addictions to whatever they were right um, let us know guys don't forget that we do wednesday live streams every wednesday at 3 p.m mountain time which is 5 p.m eastern time uh, which is 4 p.m central 2 p.m california time right so uh, come hang out on a wednesday live stream and we'll see you guys on the next one bye